When I say I got that dog in me, this is the dog that I'm referring to. Yeah. When you picture a dogfish, it's probably something close to this that you're imagining. But the reality is, dogfish is the common name for the order Squaliformis, an order of sharks that includes over 120 currently recognized species. Among them are sharks that have venomous spines on their back, sharks that glow in the dark, and sharks that survive in arctic waters by producing their own antifreeze. But what is a dogfish? How does shark venom work? And do dogfish chase catfish? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. Let's start off by meeting the family, or rather, the families. There are six families within Order Squaliformis, some familiar, some completely outlandish. They include the dogfish sharks, who the order is named after, the gulper sharks, the cold-loving sleeper sharks, the triangle-shaped rough sharks, the bioluminescent lantern sharks, and the tiny but mighty kitefin sharks. The sleeper, rough, lantern, and kitefin sharks will each get their own dedicated episode over the next few weeks. But for now, let's focus on what makes a dogfish a dogfish. These animals get their name from the tendency of some species to hunt in packs, most notably the spiny dogfish, Squalus acanthius. These packs can number in the hundreds, which I imagine to be a pretty terrifying sight if you're a small fish, or even a large fish, as spiny dogfish have been observed taking down prey even larger than themselves by working together and removing bite-sized chunks one at a time. This does not mean, however, that these sharks pose any threat to people, as long as you don't try to pet them. Perhaps the strangest feature of dogfish is the presence of defensive spines in front of each of their dorsal fins. These spines are present in all dogfish species, with the exception of most kite fin sharks and a few sleeper sharks. Bullhead sharks of order Heterodontiformis also have defensive spines, but we'll get to know them later on in this series. As we learned last week, these spines are large, heavily modified dermal denticles, the structures that cover and protect their skin. Not only are they big and sharp, they're also venomous. Probably. I'll be completely transparent with you guys, researching dogfish venom has been one of the greatest challenges I've faced while making this series so far. The general consensus seems to be that dogfish do have a mild venom, but the severity, chemical composition, and origin of this venom is either wildly inconsistent or completely non-existent across sources. Venomous and Poisonous Marine Animals, a medical and biological handbook, states that Squalus acanthius has been reported to be venomous, citing a paper from 1975, which I was not able to locate. The Monterey Bay Aquarium and Seattle Aquarium, both accredited and trustworthy scientific institutions, also refer to dogfish as venomous on their websites, but don't go into any detail. I did find one case study in Brazil from 2005 that details a fisherman's experience after being punctured by a dogfish spine, resulting in localized swelling, disproportionately intense pain that lasted for over six hours, and fluid retention around the wound that lasted for two weeks. The paper ends with a plea for marine biologists to investigate this phenomenon further. One of my regularly used resources, Sharks of the World, A Complete Guide, refers to the spiny dogfish Squalus acanthus as having, and I quote, mildly toxic dorsal spines that can cause painful lacerations. But wait, there's more. Elasmoresearch.org, which is run by the ReefQuest Center for Shark Research and is another regularly used resource for this series, claims that rather than venom, dogfish spines are coated with a bacteria-rich mucus, resulting in a rapid infection, not envenomation. On the less credible side of things, countless blog posts and news articles refer to dogfish spines as venomous, poisonous, or toxic. But again, do not cite a single source. So what can we learn from all this? 
Although members of order Squaliformis are among the most common and heavily harvested sharks on the planet, there is still a lot that we need to learn about them. The spiny dogfish was once the most abundant shark species on the planet, but overharvesting in the past century has resulted in an IUCN Red List designation of globally vulnerable and locally endangered in Europe and the Mediterranean. The good news is that populations are recovering in those regions thanks to catch limits and fishing regulations, but this is a species with a very low reproductive rate, so getting their numbers back to their historic levels will take time. And remember, the more we know about threatened species, the easier they are to manage and protect. And for the love of Neptune, will someone please do more research on their venom? Next week, we take a frigid deep dive into the largest, slowest, and longest lived members of the dogfish order, the sleeper sharks. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, like, comment, subscribe, share, etc. Before we say goodbye, I want to dedicate this video to the memory of a remarkable woman by the name of Susan Baclini. Susan played Chrissy in Jaws, the first victim of the infamous shark in the film's opening scene. I had the absolute pleasure of meeting Susan on multiple occasions at SharkCon in Florida, and meeting with her was always a highlight of my trip. Unlike the character she played, Susan was a shark lover and dedicated advocate for ocean conservation. Please join me in sending love and peace to her friends and family at this time. Until next time, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.